uh, mid to the end of June, I'm expecting us to start going up. And my expectations for this cycle are pretty lofty. I, I've publicly stated my expectations for this cycle and really by end of year is Bitcoin 140,000. Now, options are known as a pretty uh, advanced and potentially dangerous instrument. You're talking about the covered call strategy, which is very risk averse, but where do people run into trouble with options? Yeah, I think the trouble with options is when you use them to speculate as opposed to using them to mitigate risk or to generate real yield on your portfolio. If you're using options, as a vehicle to express your prediction for price, that can be a little bit of, um, it can add extra layers of risk. But if you use optionality to generate cash at specific strike prices that align with your thesis, then it's a very nice instrument to utilize to generate sats month to month while you're holding the asset anyway. Is it more expensive to have upside optionality, call options being more expensive, or is it more expensive to have protection, put options? You can look at SKU to understand market sentiment. Is the market bearish? Is the market bullish? When the market's bullish, call options relative to put options are more expensive, and vice versa when the market is bearish. Put options or the right to sell Bitcoin become more expensive relative to the right to buy Bitcoin or call options. That's my favorite indicator for understanding current market sentiment. My name is Tone Vase. I host uh, a poker tournament in Las Vegas, Bitcoin denominated poker tournament called Unconfiscatable. The next one is going to be in September and I uh, have a YouTube channel in the space. Uh, I've been around for quite a bit. So John Devine, I'm with Blockfills. We're an institutional market maker and liquidity provider. We're mostly serving asset managers, hedge funds, hodlers, Bitcoin mining operations. We're really trying to be a bridge from the traditional world into the Bitcoin world and help accelerate the adoption of Bitcoin from traditional asset managers that are looking to come into the space. All right. John. Yes, sir. Welcome to Miami. I'm uh, happy to be here and I get to be with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Tom Bays. What can be a better day? Well, speaking of day, how are you enjoying Bitcoin Day? All right. Uh, the, an awesome monthly event, brings out great speakers, nice, small, tight community. You get to actually talk some interesting stuff. Bitcoin Day has really impressed me. It's, it's, it's the... The breadth of participants that come here, you have everyone from Bitcoin curious to Bitcoin professional and everything in between. We get to talk about a wide variety of topics. This is a really fantastic event that has been put together here in Miami and also in Naples. Well, you just came off your panel talking about uh, risk, investing, derivatives. You got your book coming out. You got a Might lot well going show this on. on the camera here uh, if I can. Yeah, go ahead. Take a few minutes. Feel free to uh, promote yourself. Don't be humble. Yeah. How was it? What's going on with the book? Yeah, so I wrote this book, Bitcoin Options. It's it's really it's a book about options contracts for Bitcoin, uh, but it's also about the option of Bitcoin itself, right? So on the panel today, we talked about how can investors or holders of Bitcoin uh, utilize this asset as something that can generate Sats while they're holding Bitcoin through these tumultuous volatility moments that we experience during price discovery. Uh, that is currently happening. So what I talk a lot about is if you're a hodler of Bitcoin, you can generate sats by selling optionality against the Bitcoin you hold. I'll give you a, a quick example. We're currently, it's, it's the month of May. The last Friday of May is May 31st. So May 31st is the options expiration date for May. And as a holder of Bitcoin, I can sell a call option which is the right for someone else to buy my Bitcoin at a specific price. Give you the example. How about the 80,000 strike call option for May 31st expiration? As a holder of the asset, I can sell the 80,000 strike call option, which obligates me to sell my Bitcoin at 80,000 on May 31st. And in, in exchange for that obligation, I get paid a premium in SATs. So this works the best if someone wants to sell it at 80000 anyway, and they'll be more than happy to sell it at 80000 in May or even at the end of June. 
and now they get an extra premium for something they were going to do anyway. Exactly. So, so if I'm holding Bitcoin and I have an idea that, well, if Bitcoin went to 80,000 this month, which currently, let's say Bitcoin's trading around 60,000, would I be happy to sell some Bitcoin at 80,000? If the answer is yes, and by the way, that means on, on May 31st, if the answer to that question is yes, you should be a seller of call options. You can earn a premium from selling that optionality. You can take that premium in sats. It allows you to generate cash flow while you're holding Bitcoin uh, month to month, really. Now, options are known as a pretty uh, advanced and potentially dangerous instrument. You're talking about the covered call strategy, which is very risk averse. But where do people run into trouble with options? Uh, yeah, I think the trouble with options is when you use them to speculate as opposed to using them to mitigate risk or to generate real yield on your portfolio. If you're using options as a vehicle to express your prediction for price, that can be a little bit of, um, it can add extra layers of risk. But if you use optionality to generate cash at specific strike prices that align with your thesis, then it's a very nice instrument to utilize to generate sats month to month while you're holding the asset anyway. Yeah, and I clearly recall at a prior event we were at together, you were doing these presentations mm -hmm. and teaching the basics. We had a couple of miners in the audience and it uh, absolutely blew their mind. How important are these option strategies for mining operations that have an expected cash flow mm -hmm. that needs to be hedged? Definitely. So this is where Bitcoin is a commodity and miners are the really the producers of these commodities. Miners are, are acting as the validator of, uh, of Bitcoin blocks. And if you win that block, you get, you get paid in Bitcoin, right? As a producer of the commodity, they now have to view Bitcoin as a balance sheet asset. For a mining operation, Bitcoin is a balance sheet asset. Oftentimes, miners have to pay their expenses in dollars. Still to date, you got to pay for electricity in dollars. You have to often pay for wages in dollars. So how can you utilize options markets to create cash flow as a miner and also to manage risk? I would say like this. Every month, a Bitcoin miner has a decision. Do they sell sats to create, cat, to create US dollars to pay for expenses? If the answer is yes, which it often is, they can sell options and actually take dollars as the premium instead of sats. That's a way to generate dollars to cover some overhead. And then, you know, taking this one step further without going too crazy here, when I sell that call option, which obligates me to sell Bitcoin at a predetermined price, and I get paid either in sats or dollars for that optionality, I can then go buy protection with that premium I earn from selling the call option. One of my favorite strategies for a Bitcoin miner is selling an out-of-the-money call option, for example, the 80,000 strike call from May 31st, taking that premium and then buying a put option, which grants me the right to sell at a specific price. And an example there would be sell the 80,000 strike May 31st call options, buy the 48,000 strike put options for the same month. Now I'm obligated to sell at 80,000, but I have the right to sell at 48,000 and this provides my treasury manager at my Bitcoin mining operation a way to define the price I can certainly sell Bitcoin in exchange for dollars. No, oh, very nice. Those are usually collar strategies. Call that the zero cost collar. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin. So you're a block fills, you guys have all this data from option buyers, option sellers, mm -hmm. option hedgers. Um, you're seeing some of the supply and demand coming through. Uh, do you have any insights on where you think uh, the price of Bitcoin might be headed based on uh, some of this uh, trader tr tradable information? Yeah. Uh, I believe we are finally in a bull market. Mm -hmm. uh, the halving has passed. This is generally uh, the cycle to go up. My personal view we're going to be consolidating another month or two. Mm -hmm. But by mid to end June, uh, mid to the end of June, I'm expecting us to start going up. And my expectations for this cycle are pretty lofty. 
I, I've publicly stated my expectations for this cycle, and really by end of year is Bitcoin 140,000. I really I think that there's a shot that we have to to get to those levels. In terms of utilizing derivative markets, options, and futures to understand price movements, one of my favorite metrics is called SKU. And what SKU means is, in simple terms, is it more expensive to have upside optionality, call options being more expensive, or is it more expensive to have protection, put options? You can look at SKU to understand market sentiment. Is the market bearish? Is the market bullish? When the market's bullish, call options relative to put options are more expensive and vice versa when the market is bearish. Put options or the right to sell Bitcoin become more expensive relative to the right to buy Bitcoin or call options. That's my favorite indicator for understanding current market sentiment. The second indicator that I like to look at is the forward curve. The price of Bitcoin today, we call that the spot market, but every month, there is a price for Bitcoin to be delivered at the end of that month, meaning there's the spot market price today. There's the price for Bitcoin to be delivered on May 31st. There's the price of Bitcoin to be delivered at the end of June, July, August, and so forth, every month of the year. I can look at the prices relative from spot to May to June to July, and I can see a curve. And when that curve is upward sloping, we call that contango structure. When the market is firmly in contango, there's a bullish sentiment being expressed by the marketplace. And then we can relatively judge the steepness of that curve. How much more expensive is May 31st Bitcoin to be delivered relative to the spot market? When that spread widens and May 31st deliverable Bitcoin expands against the spot price, it tells me there's an extreme sentiment to the bullish side of the curve. We're seeing that today although the curve has come in a little bit from April where the curve was quite steep in contango. And uh, in my trading experience, once that contango gets a little bit out of hand, that's when you know the market's overheated and uh, the majority will always be wrong because there's just nobody left to buy. Okay, this is another great way to, to be contrarian in a sense. When we start to see the forward curve expand tremendously or however, whatever word you want to use for overextended, we can start to say the market's overheated. This market's probably due for a correction. And what I mean by that is if I have spot Bitcoin prices, let's say the Bitcoin I want to trade, buy and sell today is trading at 60,000. But if that May 31st Bitcoin is trading at like 64, 65, 66, I might start to say to myself, this thing's overheated. How do I protect my portfolio? How do I put on some type of hedge based on the actual market data for the contango structure. All right. Well, John, thanks so much for your insights. Let's plug that book one more time, and then uh, we're going to get back to listening to the other awesome panels. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Bitcoin options. I have no idea when you had time to write a book. You're in a hundred, you speak at a hundred events every year. <laughs> thanks, John. So, thank you. Oh, yeah. John Devine is going to hit Amazon soon. That's right. Check it out. Thank you. That was fantastic, Tom. So.